Grey Wolf adaptations The adaptations of the Grey Wolf have had a crucial role to play in making this animal one of the most widely distributed mammal on the planet today. With their population in wild declining rapidly, these very adaptation skills of the grey wolves hold the key to their survival. The geographical range of the grey wolf species spans across North America, Eurasia and northern regions of the continent of Africa, thus making it the only wild mammalian species to have such a vast geographical expanse. There exist as many as 39 subspecies of the grey wolf which are found in a range of environment right from the extremely cold regions of Alaska, the Alaskan wolf, to the warm tropical regions of the Indian subcontinent, the Indian wolf. If the grey wolf boasts of such a vast geographical expanse today, it is because of its adaptations which help it survive in this region. Animal Adaptations Grey Wolf Canis lupus, as we mentioned earlier. The natural habitat of a grey wolf spans across the northern hemisphere of the planet and includes several biomes of the world right from the Arctic tundra and North American prairies to the temperate and tropical forests of Eurasia. Different subspecies of wolf are found in different regions of the world and each of these species have adapted themselves to the conditions that exist in its native habitat as with adaptations in other species. Even those of the grey wolf are grouped into physical adaptations and behavioral adaptations both of which are discussed below. Physical adaptations of grey wolf The grey wolf is one of the most amazing sprinters in kingdom animalia. And physical adaptations like the lean body and long limbs are the key to its speed. While its elongated body acts on the lines of aerodynamics, the long limbs provide it with the much needed force to sprint and both, in combination, help it clock an amazing speed of 40 mph when chasing its prey. At the same time, the toes of this species are specially adapted to spread wide when it is running which provides the animal with much needed traction on slippery surface, especially in snow-clad arctic region. When chasing its prey, the grey wolf also uses its sharp nails to grip the ground, which in turn helps it change direction without having to slow down in its chase. Moisture is an issue for grey wolf species which inhabit the snow-clad regions of Alaska as well as for those which inhabit the forested regions of Asia that are typically characterized by abundant rainfall. This is where their specially adapted fur with a layer of oily underfur comes into picture and protects the animal from moisture, thus keeping its skin dry even in cold and wet regions. At the same time, the layer of fur which is made up of guard hair makes sure that ice or water doesn't accumulate on its body. In species like the Arctic wolf Canis lupus artos or the Alaskan wolf Canis lupus pambacillus, the fur coat is relatively thicker than the other species which helps them stay warm even in freezing surroundings. As with most of the carnivorous species, even the grey wolf has razor-sharp teeth specially adapted to pierce through the flesh of its skill. More importantly, the teeth of a wolf are specifically designed to strip pieces of flesh from the bone, which helps the species make most of its skill. With 500 lbs pressure per square inch, the jaws of this species are powerful enough to snap the neck of its prey or to crush its bones for that matter. Grey Wolf Behavioral Adaptations Among the behavioral adaptations in this species, the hunting skills that they resort to are by far the best in the Canidae family. Interestingly, the grey wolf happens to be the largest extant member of this family. When they take on some animal which is as large as or larger than them, grey wolves do not resort to frontal attack, but instead attack from behind or the side. They don't hesitate to take on animals much larger than their size such as the bison. And that's where the practice of hunting in packs comes handy for them. The high pitch howl of a wolf needs 
no introduction and they use this howl quite effectively to alert each other in case of lurking threats. In fact, a pack of grey wolves howl in peculiar manner such that it creates an illusion that the pack is much larger than it actually is. Even though the grey wolf has a simple stomach, it is large enough to store as much as 20 lbs of food. This helps the animal go without food for extended periods of time, which may at times extend to a period of two weeks. When feeding on its kill, the arctic wolf tends to eat as much as it can and store the remaining food buried beneath the snow for future. Surplus kill is yet another behavioral animal adaptation that several animals including the grey wolves resort to, wherein they hunt more animals than they can actually consume immediately and store their flesh for future use. As the temperature here is quite low, the food stays fresh for long periods. And this practice comes handy for the species when availability of food becomes a problem. As far as sensory organs are concerned, grey wolf subspecies are far more gifted as compared to their human counterparts. Their amazing sense of smell which is 100 times that of humans allows them detect the presence of other animals in the surroundings with ease. Similarly, their eyes are extremely sensible to movements around them. The presence of the petum lucidum, a reflective retina, which is also seen in dogs and various other vertebrates, adds to their night vision, thus helping them hunt at night as well. All these sensory adaptations don't just help grey wolf subspecies find food, but also help them avoid the threat of closing in on predators such as brown bears and tigers. While those were some of the grey wolf adaptations in general, some subspecies of this animal do have a few specific adaptations of their own. For instance, the Arabian wolf, Canis lupus arabs, native to the Arabian peninsula, has ears which are large in proportion to its body size, and that helps this species disperse body heat effectively. Similarly, those subspecies which live in the higher latitudes have a thicker fur coat as compared to those subspecies which live in the tropics. Forest-dwelling wolf species are smaller in size as compared to those species which inhabit the open lands. At the end of the day, it is all about the survival and when it comes to survival, all these adaptations come as a blessing in disguise.